Have you ever considered diving into the world of Airbnb and short-term rentals? Before trying to double or even triple your rental income overnight, you may wanna fully understand some of the pitfalls. Now, don't get me wrong, there are certainly pros to this approach, but I believe the cons often outweigh the benefits. Stick around as I break down the top five reasons I've decided to steer clear of short-term rentals and why you may wanna do the same. Hey everyone, Darren Boros here. Platforms like Airbnb have changed the game for many investors. Turning their rental properties into boutique hotels has been very lucrative for many investors, but I've never jumped on board. Not because I don't think it's a viable option, but more because I feel it's a fad, and as quickly as it's come into play, it could just as easily be taken away. So with that, here are the five reasons why I avoid short-term rentals. Reason number one, regulations are always changing. Local laws and regulations governing short-term rentals can be a nightmare to navigate. What might be allowed today could easily be prohibited tomorrow. This uncertainty can lead to legal hassles, fines, and even potential eviction of your guests. Many municipalities are introducing regulations around short-term rentals, only allowing them in your principal residence and only allowing them for a portion of the year. Licensing is also something that more and more municipalities are bringing into play. So if you bought a rental property that only works as a short-term rental and the rules suddenly change, you could be losing money on it real quick. Reason number two, furnishing units can be very expensive. Turning your property into a short-term rental requires furnishing and decorating each unit to attract guests. Many investors hire a designer to pimp out their spaces. Beyond that, you'll also want high quality furniture, trendy decor, and added amenities to maintain positive reviews and competitive pricing. This can be a significant out-of-pocket expense with no guarantee on how long it will take to earn back that investment. You could be looking at one to two years to pay off that initial investment before you're profitable. Combine that with point number one and the ever-changing regulations, and this can be a recipe for disaster. Point number three, mixing short-term and long-term tenants. If you've got a multi-unit building and some of your units are dedicated to short-term rentals and some are long-term rentals, this can be super challenging. Short-term renters often have different expectations and behaviors than long-term residents. This can lead to conflicts and negatively impact your property's atmosphere. For example, short-term tenants are generally less concerned about being noisy because they're most likely vacating the space in the near term and don't have to worry about coming face-to-face -face with their soon-to-be angry neighbors. There are also people checking in at all hours of the day and night, which can be very disruptive to your long-term tenants. Point number four, wear and tear on your unit. The more turnover you have, the more wear and tear your property will experience. Short-term rentals tend to have higher turnover rates compared to long-term leases. This means more frequent cleanings, but you'll also need to budget for maintenance and replacements over time. After dealing with a continuous stream of guests, your property might start to show signs of wear and tear sooner than you'd expected. Number five, you're now running a business. When you venture into Airbnb or similar platforms, you're essentially starting a hospitality business. Coordinating with cleaners, managing bookings, dealing with guest inquiries, and handling unexpected issues becomes part of your daily routine. It's a lot more work than simply collecting rent from long-term tenants. And I'm a big believer that time is money and this extra time commitment might not align with your investment goals. Having said that you can hire all of this out to a third party company and there are many out there that can service your short term rentals, but be prepared to pay for these services and run your numbers with these fees in mind. While the potential for higher income can be tempting, the risks, uncertainties and additional responsibilities may be more than you want to take on. Of course, every investor's situation is unique, so weigh the pros and cons before making your decision. Now, full disclosure, I do plan on adding short-term rentals to my portfolio in the near future as we're building six homes in Costa Rica that will become short-term rentals. The reason why I'm less concerned about this strategy in this area is because pretty much every property in this vacation destination is either a hotel or a short-term rental. The need for this kind of housing is driving tourism, so restricting this kind of housing, while it's not impossible, would be detrimental to the economy. So I feel pretty comfortable with my short-term rentals in Costa Rica. We will also hire out all of those third-party items like bookings, maintenance, and cleaning, and it's a lot less expensive in a country like Costa Rica to have that done than it is here in North America. 
So now I'd love to hear your thoughts and whether you are for or against short-term rentals in your portfolio. I look forward to your comments below. If you're interested in learning more about how I'm building six houses in Costa Rica, it's something I teach in my development course. You can check it out on my website at darrenboros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regular updates on our active development projects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.